eight seven, and we're almost at the end of the textbook now. So eight seven is an optional topic, right? So this is an optional topic, um, but uh, a lot of professors uh, cover it, and so I decided I'll make a video on it. And in this video, we're only going to do uh, second order uh, different cues. Uh, and, and, and it's because a third order one, um, you can generalize variation parameters to third order. It's not bad. Uh, if you're in my classes, uh, if I ever TA 240 again, I will definitely do an example in class, uh, in, in recitation of a third order different queue. So, but second order is generally what's going to show up, um, on exams. And so let's now consider then this following, uh, differential equation y double prime plus 4y prime plus 4y is equal to a x a e to the negative 2x l and x okay and so if you go to your uh page that one page in the textbook on a co not complex value trial but uh, what was what it? Undetermined method of undetermined coefficients, right? Where it, the book tells you what to guess for your particular solution. Um, you're going to realize that, uh, yeah, uh, the, 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 the book doesn't have anything for L and X. So that's why we're going to have to use this method. So before we dive into that part, the first one's always the homogeneous. And I'm just going to assume you guys know how to solve the homogeneous now. You know what the homogeneous of this is. It's going to be C1 e to the negative 2x plus C2x e to the negative 2x. All right, and so that's going to be the homogeneous. And I'm just going to extract then the linearly independent parts of the homogeneous equation, which is this guy and this guy, right? So e, e to the negative 2x is linearly independent from x e to the negative 2x. And so I want to say that there are two linearly independent parts. So y1 is equal to then e to the negative 2x. And I'm going to say y2 is equal to x e to the negative 2x, okay? And so that's where these guys come from. I find the homogeneous and I take the linearly independent parts and then I s label one of them as y1 and the one of them as y2. Cool. All right. Part two comes the variation of parameters, guess. Param guess. Hopefully you guys can read that. It, says, it should say var variation of param guess, but my handwriting is so bad that that doesn't look like param. That won't make it look like param. Or kind of. So what is it? Well, it says that yp is equal to u1y1 plus u2. Oh, boy, what happened there? u2y2, uh, y2, right? So it, so it says that yp is u1y1 plus u2y2. Well, we know what y1 and y2 are. y1 and y2 come from above. So this is u1e to the negative 2x plus u2 x e to the negative 2x. So what the hell are u1 and u2? And this this guess honestly seems like to come out of nowhere, right? Like there's no, there's no like, you know, in like theory, like there is theory behind it. They're just not gonna teach it to you in this class. Um, and so this is just more of that hand wavy differential equation bullshit that you have to put up with really. Uh, and it only gets worse from here. Uh, I'm, let's just make that clear. So, uh, yeah, so you just guess that it's equal to U1Y1 plus U2Y2, right? This right-hand side, I couldn't find uh, a, a better guess, so I have to go to this guess. And so now, I have to find U1 and U2, right? And so how do I find U1 and U2? Well, now, here comes more bullshit. <laughs> um, U1 is equal to the integral of Y2 times F over the Ronskian of y1, y2, right? Or the negative of that. And then u2 is equal to y1, f, time, or divided by the Ronskian of y1, y2, all right? And then you gotta take the integral. And this just looks like uh, a complete load of crap, right? So first of all, what the hell are any of these things? Uh, f is this guy, this is f, okay? So the right-hand side is f, and the Ronskian of y1 and y2 are you input, right? So most of you guys should have covered this in class. Um, I didn't cover it in a video, but essentially you put y1, y1, uh, y1, y1 prime, and then y2, y2 prime in a matrix, and you take the determinant, right? So these straight line brackets mean determinant, and so you, you take the determinant of those guys. And so 
In our case, then, u1 would be negative. Don't forget the negative on the u1. I had to remake this video because I dropped this negative sign and then for some reason couldn't find it. Uh, uh, so y2 is then x e to the negative 2x times f, which is e to the negative 2x ln x, right? Divided by the Ronskian, so might as well find the Ronskian, which in our case is going to be y1 is e to the negative 2x and y2 is x e to the negative 2x. So this is negative 2 e to the negative 2x, and this becomes 1 minus 2. Uh, or, uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, it, it becomes uh, e to the negative 2x minus 2x e to the negative 2x. All right. And so again, straight line brackets mean determinant, which I haven't been, I don't know if I, I don't remember if I did this for chapter three, but so what is that? Uh, that makes this e to the negative four x minus two x e to the negative four x, right? Cause you add the exponents, okay, for e, so, okay. And then you subtract a negative 2x e to the negative 4x. All right, that's cool because then this guy and that guy cancel. So this is just e to the negative 4x. All right, so this bottom is then is e to the negative 4x. And so u1 is really uh, the inter negative integral of, well, e to the negative 4x cancels out this guy, these two guys. And so it's now the negative integral of x ln x. All right, and so I guess there's a dx here, but okay, you yeah, know, whatever. Um, uh, like this is the plug and chug series, not the write all the notation correct series. Uh, okay, so now we gotta integrate this guy, uh, right? Because u1's the in integral of x ln x. Uh, how do we integrate it? By parts, or if you're smart on your cheat sheet, you say that x ln x uh, it, 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 this is equal to, um, this is equal to, uh, negative, uh, one fourth X squared two LN X minus one. All right. And so then distribute the negative sign, um, uh, and you'll get negative, uh, or, you know, if you distribute the negative sign, you just flop these two guys. So you get one fourth x squared one minus two ln x. All right, and so this guy right here, this is the integral. Um, this is the result of the integral, and it, it, it's something to put in on your cheat sheet. This is the integral of ln x, or x ln x, uh, x ln x. All right, integral of x ln x is negative is one fourth x squared two x two ln x minus one. All right, cool. So we found u one. So now u two is equal to e to the negative 2x, e to the negative 2x ln x, divided by e to the negative 4x, right? And so they cancel, they cancel. And now u2 is just the integral of ln x, which is actually very, not very easy, but this is also something you should have on a cheat sheet. Uh, the integral of ln x is x ln x minus x, okay? And so now part four then is to plug back into uh, yp, so this is a y, uh, my handwriting is just really bad. So you want to plug it back into yp, and so uh, what do you get now? You get yp of x, or just yp, is equal to one fourth um, x squared uh, one minus two ln x times, so this is u1 y1, which is e to the negative two x, plus uh, x ln x minus x times uh, what is the x e to the negative 2x. So now we have u1, y1, u2, y2. Okay, and this actually then becomes 1 fourth x squared e to the negative 2x, 1 minus 2 ln x, um, plus x squared e to the negative 2x ln x minus 1. And so this, we can actually simplify, it becomes 1 fourth x squared e to the negative 2x, uh, 2 ln x minus 3. 
And so you guys can figure out this step from here to here, but essentially it just involves this is really four over four, and then you can uh, play with the fractions, okay? And then so, all right, now what? Now what? Uh, now we, uh, step five is to uh, general solution is the general solution which is y then is equal to c1 e to the negative 2x plus c2 x e to the negative 2x. Right? This is the homogeneous or the complementary and then plus 1 fourth x squared e to the negative 2x, 2 ln x minus 3. Okay, and that is variation of parameters. Uh, again, what are the caveats? The caveats is that this integration stuff right here, it, it only works for u1 and u2. And so that's the main reason why we're only doing second order uh, variation of parameters. So when do we use variation of parameters is when this right hand side has some random shit that we just like we, we can't uh, find a really good guess for. And so we just have to guess really generally um, this YP right here. And then uh, from there we solve for U1 and U2. Okay. And yeah, variation of parameters. We're done.